Good afternoon, good night, and good morning, everybody. So thank you very much to join us for this uh, industrial talk. Okay. So I give the floor to José to start the presentation of uh, Diego. So thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, so Diego, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Um, and I would like to introduce you to our audience. So um, Diego had his degree in physics from the University of Turin and his master's and his PhD uh, from the University of Perugia. He did research in various international academic groups, such as the Northwestern University in the US, Technical University of Lodz in Poland, um, and the University of Perugia in Italy. He was a research scientist and developer of organic photovoltaics in Konarka, Austria as well. Um, in 2012, he co-founded MorphWise SNC, um, developing simulation tools for molecular dynamics and OPV devices. Um, since 2014, he manages the research and development activities and recently became chief scientific officer at the CSCM Brazil. So, um, Diego, again, thank you for accepting our invitation. And let me just switch to your presentation. Yeah. And, and please, thank you. So many thanks, uh, Jose and uh, Ricardo, for the great uh, uh, introduction, and especially for, uh, uh, for the invitation. Uh, I try just uh, to switch my presentation. So uh, what I would like to talk today is uh, exactly so uh, the, the title explained pretty well, so from lab to fab, uh, more or less uh, what could be necessary uh, to do from uh, the small devices uh, till to arrive for a module, um, in, in this case for the OPV, but uh, there is as well the new technology is growing and that is called, that is based on the perovskite uh, material. Here, so I don't know if you see on uh, behind of me. So uh, we are. Uh, I'm in a uh, in a meeting room where is already covered by the organic photovoltaics uh, produced by Sanyu. That is our spin-off. But so let's go. I have uh, several uh, several uh, slides. Uh, I hope that I have time for uh, everything. Otherwise, so I am already asked to you to be sorry. Uh, if I maybe I try to skip something and so just to give uh, more uh, more time as well for the uh, eventual uh, questions. So just to give a brief introduction for what is uh, CSM Brazil. CSM Brazil was born in 2006 and uh, uh, was born from some founders or from some investors that would like to start to make uh, uh, technology as well here in Brazil and was took uh, this model uh, uh, from uh, uh, from Switzerland, and so the CSM and the acronym translated from France uh, is uh, for, uh, is um, a center Swiss uh, uh, electronic and microelectronics. So in this case, what we try to doing so just to let uh, more specific, we are uh, in a we are um, um, a no profit uh, research institute, uh, private, uh, and uh, and so what we would like to do and what we try to do, what we are doing. Um, reality so is uh, to try to make the bridge between the basic research and uh, and the market so in this case uh, what we what we take uh, so is uh, we check uh, different uh, technology and tendentially what we are done what we are doing uh, is to prototype in this uh, technology in order to demonstrate that it's possible to arrive to a potential product and so to the market and so the first job is to scale up uh, this kind and they demonstrated that uh, this new technology is possible to arrive to uh, to the market and the second <coughs> sorry and the second is to arrive and to try to make a, a spin-off in order to commercialize as well uh, with the new investor uh, the, the technology. In this case, today we are uh, speaking about much more for the OPV. There is as well a section of the perovskite, as I said before. Uh, but just to give an overview as well uh, on the, our R&D section, uh, so uh, it's clear that the R&D is pretty expensive, and so uh, everything that we can test in the small devices uh, that can give us an indication uh, is uh, is one of the first step uh, exactly to reduce the cost uh, in the, the, the lab scale. And so for the small devices, uh, we 
apply and we uh, coating uh, the, the structure and the molecule that uh, um, that demonstrate so if the material and the stack in particular are able to work. So after we have a, as well another section that is uh, connected to the module coating, uh, that is a, a single station R&D roll to roll. In this case, uh, is a machine like uh, to print in the newspaper. And uh, so in this case uh, is already a first step for the scale up in order to demonstrate that the small device is able to work as well in this mini module. Uh, another part, uh, I don't know, uh, so the, the audience, uh, the, the, um, uh, the background of the audience, but in, uh, in this case, the organic photovoltaics, but as well the perovskite, are, uh, com are compounded, uh, so are called in particular for the organic photovoltaics by the organics, so are based material on the carbon. And so in this case, they have uh, um, um, particular uh, uh, degradation if there is a, a exposure to the uh, oxygen in general. And so for this, it's necessary at encapsulation and we have a different facility to uh, different equipment to, uh, to protect the, our films in order to have a, a longer lifetime in the uh, standard environment. The other part is, is clear, all the study about the lifetime and stability, today I will not dedicate too much time over this, there is a, just a small overview, but just to tell that we have as well all the equipment in order to uh, to make a, in some in some part some prediction and to understand as well where is necessary to work in the all the step that I said before. So in the other side, so just to give a, a brief overview as well on the, our activity, something I already said, uh, but uh, in uh, in this case, so uh, there is all the part for the scale up and. Uh, um, in the, for the OPV, for example, we have all the part for the old part for the uh, R and D development, and uh, so we help as well the our spin off uh, Sun New uh, to translate the R and D for uh, the production line. Uh, in that way, as I already mentioned, there is the uh, research and development on the OPV, the new challenge and the new topics uh, that uh, we explain it later. And there is as well the part for the perovskite that is new kind of hybrid material that uh, is one of the most promising technology in the last few years, especially for the energy production. Uh, we have as well all the part for the low light, uh, in this case for uh, application for uh, uh, Internet of Things uh, or for sensor or for whatever that you want that uh, need energy or need to be independent uh, in, the, in the low light uh, condition uh, uh, operation. Uh, and there is the most recent uh, development that we, we, we are um, uh, exploring uh, is the FHE, that is the flexible hybrid electronic, because we have as well a department uh, connected to the uh, standard electronic. Uh, and this way, we try to make the first step for this kind of hybrid to use the most recent uh, uh, electronic uh, in coating and flexible, and to try to integrate uh, the uh, much older technology or the standard technology of the electronic. Uh, technology that we are, have already in, uh, in our pocket today. But let's go, so the basic condition for the, for the uh, lab to fab in, in general, so in this case there are three main topics. The first one is clear that if you are working in the lab condition, you are, can, you are able to work in a glow box or inert condition, but this will be impossible for a potential scale up. So for this, one of the first step is exactly to try to remove every kind of danger solvent involved. And so in this case, to avoid specific halogenated or chlorinated solvent and to change for halogen free or chlorinated free solvents. This uh, seems a small step, but tendentially, especially for the nanotechnology applied, in this case for the uh, organic photovoltaics, so for the perovskite, is a pretty uh, big challenge because normally the halogen, halogenated solvent give a better morphology, uh, in nanomorphology in, uh, internal of the bulk uh, of the active layer. <clears throat> and so in this case, uh, it's clear that uh, is uh, is expected a reduction of this uh, uh, performance, uh, uh, in particular for uh, reducing the, uh, the the mix between the, the elements. Um, so the other part is exactly so to make a scale up is necessary to try to reduce uh, the capex and so the investment for a, a production uh, and so need need to or must to be in uh, in oxygen or in, 
more in general, it's really in air, in air. And so in this way, every migration from a particular condition need to be in, uh, in air. The, the third part, to increase the productivity and so the production, the yield as well in that way, uh, so it's necessary to move as well from a glass in a flexible substrate. For the, for the perovskite, maybe could be in the middle stage, uh, that will be possible as well to do for the, uh, for the glass substrate in the beginning. But for the OPV, it's already a reality, and especially as well in general for the organic electronic, uh, it's appreciated as well to take the advantage uh, to have a thinner film, really light, and so in that way to provide it to be on flexible substrate. In this case, it could be maybe a PET substrate. The other part, so it's clear, uh, for uh, the organic photovoltaics need to generate uh, power, and so in that way need efficiency and need as well lifetime, because need to operate for the long time. So in that way, for a uh, uh, Improve this part, so it's necessary two big parts. One is the chemistry, because it's clear we are working in uh, inks, uh, inks uh, that uh, we are able to coating, as I said before. And so, in this way, it's clear that all the de de development specific in this case uh, for the organic chemistry, but as well in organic, uh, for, uh, for example, for the perovskite. Or other, or other layer involved, uh, is uh, pretty fundamental. So in the last 20 years, uh, so was make a really huge step forward in that part. And uh, so, uh, and the other part is the process, because it's clear that when you, you have a, a ink uh, and you have to deposit, uh, so you have all the fluidodynamic involved and uh, you have all the dynamics as well uh, connected to the evaporation of the solvent. And so the assessment of the material inside the need to arrive in a right uh, in a right morphology or in the case of the perovskite to have the right uh, uh, crystallization and so the clusterization and the crystallization of the um, uh, of the materials and so it's clear that the process is pretty fundamentals uh, fundamental and, uh, and and both are connected for one part that is uh, uh, created by the formulation and the formulation is one of the central part because it's able to, to be modified in order to not stress too much uh, the chemistry side for example for the solution but as well to follow the part of the process uh, that uh, has uh, some limitation especially i don't know for the for the flux or for the uh, the drying and the dimension of the oven and for the drying so there are several parts in that way so the formulation is, the, is created from uh, one side from the material and the other side to change the parameter of the process. And for each one, so as I said, so there are a different uh, parameters. So in the case of the material, so there are the components that are created for the stack and the parameter that is created from the, uh, the, the defined, so the, how, how is uh, the, the, the speed or the concentration of the temperature involved. Uh, the other part for a general overview, so is the lifetime. The lifetime is dependent from other part that is the stability. So in this case, it's not only to have a longer lifetime, but as well to have a stronger stability of the of the panel. So in that way, there are not fluctuation for the same uh, comparison of the same uh, uh, condition. In this way, normally is divided uh, from uh, two parts. One is the extrinsic stability, so everything that's happened or what's happened outside of the panel, in this case, is involved with the barrier, the adhesive, and for example, the content, how to take the content to avoid the penetration of the water. In the other side, there is the intrinsic stability, so what's happening intrinsically of the material in the stack in the layers that are involved. So, in this way, the main part is the connected to the active layer, there is uh, the interlayers that are uh, the layer uh, involved to extract uh, the charge, uh, so in this case all or uh, electron. There is the interfaces that is another big, big topic that recently started to take a really strong position, especially in literature and especially for the basic research, and there are the electrons. The other part, just to give as well a, a small overview in the general cost, so in that way it's clear every this this uh, this cake uh, are not uh, viable. So in that way, it's depending by the uh, by, by the material involved, by the supplier, the 
quantity. So it was just a, a really small overview just to show uh, the difference between the, the two technology and so where is need uh, necessary, where is necessary to work in on uh, to reduce the cost. It's clear that uh, for the OPV, one of the main costs, uh, depending again from the material involved, so for some, uh, for some more commercial material, are uh, much less uh, the dependence from the active layer. I'm speaking about much more from the R&D side in this case. And as well from the perovskite in this way, it's clear that, uh, for example, the barrier is still uh, using, uh, in this case, the glass, uh, and so as a big weight uh, from the total cost of the potential panel. Uh, in the other side, so just to give as well uh, a small overview for the scale up. Uh, so, tendentially for the RD, so there are three parameters involved. So, there is the cost, the efficiency, and the lifetime. And every, and every um, research and every deep development, so it's necessary to consider this parameter. But when we try to move in the, uh, in the production, so it's still the three before from the R&D, so the cost, efficiency, lifetime, but there is another issue, so that is connected to the yield. And uh, so until now, okay, so we have as well the yield to maintain, so the yield higher possible in order to reduce it as well directly to the cost for the panel. And for the third part, so for the products, the square become a pentagon where uh, over the three parameters explained before, there is the, as well the reliability and the warranty. And so in this way, it's clear that for the R&D, the most important part is to have a direct connection uh, for the product issue, for the product issue, uh, specific for a, a specific application. So in this way, it's much easier to dedicate the time in, uh, in terms of uh, development and as well for a new material, new stack, uh, or, or everything that is involved uh, in order to, um, to follow the request by the potential application after I have uh, some examples. Uh, just to give as well an, a more, uh, maybe uh, so give a, a better idea as well. I don't know how many body know the TRL. TRL is the technology readiness level. So they want to try to divide in nine step uh, when uh, one technology is ready for the market or has become a real product. So it's clear that the TRL one is the scratch. So in that way from the basic research when it discovers something. And this was a really small overview uh, to compare as well for the evolution of the of the of the human and so in that way maybe the OPV we can speak in about uh, much more uh, um, uh, so uh, um, so a human that is more closer to the Homo sapiens uh, and so uh, for the perovskite uh, more connected uh, maybe to the Australopithecus or Homo erectus in that way. So just to give a, a step, so in that way, the OPV, we are speaking about much more for the TRL 7, 8, depending on the, uh, of the application. Uh, for some application that just is started to develop, maybe it could be just in the level 6. Uh, for, the, uh, for the perovskite, it's clear. Speaking from the our development, maybe we are still in the uh, around of 4. For some lab of some company around the world, could be that are around of 5. Um, so it was just a small overview as well to understand which kind of level of the technology and which kind of step is necessary to do still for the two technology in comparison. The other part, so I tried to divide as well the application in this way. Uh, so the outdoor application, uh, that's uh, everything is connected for the application where there is the direct sun, where there is uh, the direct exposure to the temperature and variation of temperature, the, the humidity, strong humidity in that way, the, 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 the rain, the, the ultraviolet in that way, the dust that uh, can damage as well. And so in this case, it's clear it's the biggest challenge because uh, is, uh, we live in a paradox because it's clear that the OPV is also called plastic uh, PV. Uh, you already know from your day-by-day uh, -by -day experience uh, that uh, uh, so if you leave a, a polymer or the more uh, normal name is a plastic, uh, leave uh, uh, under the sun, you already know that after six months uh, you find your, uh, your pen uh, in plastic already yellow or started to degrade really fast. So in this case, we need to leave the, our panel under the sun to produce energy. And so it's clear that the challenge connected for this part is pretty strong and pretty high. Uh, 
uh, but step by step is possible to, to do and depending on the application is already find the solution. Uh, there is as well another part uh, for the, um, uh, how I call it, uh, indoor <coughs> or low light application. In this case, we can take an example, for example, the BIPV, that is the building integration photovoltaics, uh, or uh, say in another word, so all the application where there is still uh, maybe a direct light, but in much less, uh, or maybe there is a, a glass protection where the part of the, the, the direct light is less and there is much more diffusion light and the temperature humidity is uh, less aggressive. These are important part because for this kind of application it's clear that uh, there are uh, a different solution, maybe cheaper, or uh, it's possible to improve maybe in some part the lifetime and the stability. The other third part uh, is all the application where we speaking about low light or extremely low light, in this case, like in your house uh, or uh, in supermarket or in the office. Uh, so where is possible to provide from the artificial light and to convert in energy for a different uh, application, like I mentioned before, Internet of, of Things. Uh, the other part, so just to give a small overview for the upscaling, so in this case there are different challenges when you start to move from the, from the small devices and uh, uh, I, don't know, I try to make a bit, okay. Um, uh, so from the small devices, uh, so there are different challenges where you try to move uh, in, a, in a single station and so in this case it's clear that this is one of the small example but for example in the small devices uh, the molecular weight of the polymer or in this way the, the viscosity are not so extremely important or, or at least um, I don't want to say that is not important because it's important but it's less uh, um, so uh, influence less uh, the, the performance in this way and uh, if it's not changing so much it's clear but it's an important part uh, that's uh, if, when there is a small variation especially for the roll to roll uh, in this case for the single station uh, is something that you already see and so in that way is something that is already necessary to pay attention and to translate uh, in a, uh, to have a good relationship for the supplier who provided the material in order to have the right material with the right molecular weight. Another part is clear, here I said that uh, is a single station so every time for uh, we have a uh, five layers uh, the thinner is uh, less than 10 nanometer and the thicker is arriving to 300 and 350 nanometer so in this way is a sandwich uh, really really thin in the thickness and so we take uh, so for the single station r d uh, layer by layer where we take in the end and we put again the beginning and we coating uh, for the five layer. This will be something that was, uh, I don't want to say impossible, but will reduce the capability as well for the production line. And so in this case, we have for the Sanyu, um, uh, the, 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 the production line that are five station, uh, one for each layer. And so in this way, it's possible to coat in, in a unique line, uh, all, the, all the old stack. And so in the end, you have already all the panel uh, ready so ready for uh, for the encapsulation so in this case i put uh, just uh, uh, a small example that there is this ch challenge for the scale up because for the single station if you are able to coating uh, layer by layer you can speed the time you can speed uh, you, you sorry you can change the time for uh, so the speed the temperature so you can dedicate for each layer the right condition for the production line need to go for the same speed and so in that way sometimes you have to back for the for the r d side in order to find the right recipe in the other part so just really quick so the our module for the basic uh, for the basic research and for the basic module to gain the statistic especially especially for the performance and the lifetime uh, another part is really interesting because when you are working for the basic research you are more looking for for the results in our case I dedicate for the scale up r d so it's clear that as well the static is one of the issue and so you can see that the performance here the results are normalized but just to say that uh, to increase in the speed because what's necessary as I explained before increase the speed of the uh, of the production line uh, from the r d and so was necessary to change and you see in the right side that's uh, so the quality was pretty 
poor uh, in, in terms of aesthetics, uh, but uh, the performance was pretty similar. So in this way, it was necessary as well to change the uh, parameter in order to have a, as well a nice view of the, of the panel. From the scale up, from point of view as well, the stability, in this case, there is as well one part uh, that's uh, growing uh, the dimension. Uh, what we expected is uh, there is a limit. I have a graph later to explain slightly better this. But just to say that uh, tendentially, especially for the uh, humidity penetration, uh, tendentially what we are expecting uh, that when growing uh, the dimension of the panel, uh, the same border or the same thickness of the border is similar. And so in that way, when you increase the panel, uh, is expected the less uh, behavior from the smaller if it's not uh, reduced in this way for the humidity penetration from the side. Uh, just a small overview, really small, because I see that it's already passing close to 25 minutes, uh, so I would like to speak much more uh, in the other part. But so just a small overview as well, a difference between uh, for the organic photovoltaics and perovskite. Uh, so in this case, as I said, uh, the, the OPV are more organic, organic material, uh, carbon-based, and so we have the polymer and we have as well some sector that are uh, can be a oh, small molecule or uh, like recently more developed or uh, otherwise uh, fuller and based. And so what we are looking for is a uh, nanomorphology where there is a right separation, uh, phase separation between the donor and the acceptor in order to have uh, uh, the, the migration and so the, the, the collection as well of the charge uh, that go into the contact. From the side of the perovskite, in this case, uh, we are speaking about uh, 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 hybrid material, so it's organic in organic material. And what you are looking for is to achieve grain and so in this way you have uh, to have a, a clusterization and crystallization and so this is a pretty deter determinated how can works uh, the, the the devices and this is a really really big challenge because a really small variation can determine how growing the crystal and so then uh, as well not only how how works and so the performance you can achieve, but as well the lifetime in, uh, in particular, um, uh, the stability. This is depending as well of the stack involved, but this is, uh, was just uh, uh, a, small, uh, a small overview, a small uh, comparison for the two technologies. Uh, just to give as well, and so in this way, I, I, I try to use it as well because I'm not uh, explaining till now what is an OPV. So this is a, a more common uh, OPV structure, not look at this uh, purple because it's a perovskite, but the stack is the same or similar uh, stack uh, that is possible to use uh, for the OPV, where here instead of the methyl ammonium that is uh, the, the, the most common uh, um, perovskite material used now, uh, is used, as I said before, uh, organic material, so our polymer or a sector. But the stack is exactly this one. Um, uh, in reality, so is uh, slightly different because uh, this uh, HTL is uh, on the top, uh, and uh, so the other ETL, so the electron transport layer, uh, tendentially is on the bottom. But uh, at least, so was just to give a, a small uh, overview and so for the perovskite we are able to use in the both uh, uh, stack and so normally it's, uh, this is a called a PIN structure because you have uh, the, uh, the HDL uh, um, in this case so the old transport uh, layer in this case old transport material that is able to extract the oil and to col collect to the ITO that is the indium tin oxide the bottom contact in the other side the NIP and so in the bottom you have a uh, uh, ETL, so in this case, uh, a material that uh, is an electron transport layer, <coughs> so as a function of uh, like an electron transport layer to collect exactly the electron. In this case, the ETL, so the, the, the function is made by the PCBM, that is a fuller and derivatives in this case, uh, or the lithium fluoride or other material that is able to work like a, a buffer. Just to try to go on, just a small overview, so for the difference for the two stacks, and especially for the difference as well for the how it is using. So the spin coating tendentially is, uh, 
is, uh, is an equipment with a spinning saw, and that's where you can create a, a film by centrifuge, but uh, this is uh, not possible to make a scale up. And so tendentially every, every time, so we, are, we, we try to work in, and we are working tendentially uh, for the small devices on the blade coating that is uh, like a blade that's with a movement is able to deposit uh, and to create the film uh, with the, all the fluidodynamics that I mentioned before. And so a small comparison, uh, so just uh, to change the material as well as so to change the deposition, what you are, we are able to achieve uh, till now uh, for uh, the different stack. Uh, in the other part, so one of the, the main part that I mentioned uh, before, especially as well for the perovskite, is one of the uh, tricky parts is to uh, take the basic uh, condition or the basic uh, development from, uh, from uh, basic research and tendentially most of the time there are uh, so evaporated material and so for the scale up uh, has not too much sense in order to reduce the cost for the eventual uh, um, um, company or to for production and so uh, uh, it's clear that one of the step was exactly to try to remove uh, one of the materials so this kind of uh, is a buffer was a recent publication uh, from our side in uh, ACS photonics uh, uh, in this year and so was uh, we were able exactly to translate uh, this kind of uh, material that that's work uh, like a buffer this is a uh, this yellow material in order to have uh, a by by coating and so was uh, now fully printed already perovskite in R and uh, so without uh, except the, the the silver that is still evaporated uh, this is a small uh, example of the our mini module in reality is already a string it's not only a module but it's a connection of more than one module so for uh, the OPV, uh, just to give a, a really brief overview, just to not take uh, too much uh, too much time over, just to leave as well time for uh, for the um, uh, for the eventual uh, um, questions. So as I said before, there is a small uh, migration as well uh, in the development. So tendentially, uh, we're using uh, a fuller and basic uh, material like an acceptor in the OPV. And now, so there is as well uh, the new kind of material that working like uh, uh, L, um, uh, a material that are able to, to transport electron. Uh, that's are no, normally the category is called a non fuller and acceptor, exactly to say it and to make a difference to the fullerene that are uh, tendentially a small molecule. The big gain uh, for, uh, for this kind of migration uh, in, uh, with this material is uh, because before you have a donor that there is a, a, main, uh, a main absorption and uh, the fullerene normally there is an absorption in the ultraviolet part. The normally with the encapsulation you try to block in the ultraviolet exactly to reduce the degradation that I mentioned before. Uh, and so the contribution for the absorption of the material uh, uh, from the light uh, is uh, was already just uh, for the materials uh, for the donor in this way so to move uh, to move and to change the acceptor in a small molecule that is able to to, uh, to transport the electron and so to make the same um, the same uh, work of the fuller and um, the fuller and uh, acceptor in this case the acceptor is already able to catch part of the light the, the light that is not able to catch by the, the donor. And so in this case, more wide you are able to absorb and more you increase in the current, but in general as well, uh, the efficiency. And so in this case, it's clear that uh, and, uh, is, uh, is, the, our, uh, is the, the new OPV, so the OPV 2.0, if we can call like that, uh, where it's possible to achieve really, really high performance. Just to mention it that uh, this year, so the uh, one recent uh, publication, the OPV is arrived over 18% uh, in, uh, in uh, conversion efficiency. So uh, I try to just to maybe to skip uh, some part of this, uh, just to give you maybe just an overview. This is a bit interesting from glass uh, to, to flexible and to comparing as well uh, the, <coughs> the chlor chlorated uh, or chlorinated or, or, or green solvent. So in this case, there are 
a small variation and uh, what is interesting that for example for this kind of uh, structure uh, you see that uh, the migration for the glass and for the flexible uh, the difference between the chlorated solvent and the green solvent is the same and the difference between the, the, the glass and the flexible is connected to the transparency so tendentially the glass is much more uh, transparent and so in this case affected the, the, the part of the current that is reduced because you have a, a less photo, photo generation current but you see that as well for the tension and so the VOC in this case uh, is maintaining the same. <coughs> Another interesting part that I would like to spend just one, uh, one minute uh, is uh, connected how it's possible to work in, on the material in order to achieve uh, for a different application uh, what you need. Uh, so in this case it's possible to combine a different uh, material, in this case the donor or the acceptor, in this case the donor <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> in this case, the donor, um, so it could be a low band gap uh, uh, donor. In this case, when I say low band gap, is the difference between the homo and the lumo. Uh, um, and the wide band gap, so the wide is because it's bigger, this uh, difference between the, do the, the homo and the lumo. Uh, of the material and they combine with different uh, non fullerene acceptor you you are able to see that it's possible to tuning not only the current that you have in outside but as well the VOC why this is important because in this case it's possible to provide for example for the low light condition is much more tendentially in reality is important as well the VOC but the more direct correlation is connected to the current and so in this way if you have a higher current in uh, output uh, for the low light or diffusion light uh, uh, condition uh, will be slightly better. In the case, uh, for example, for the uh, full sun application, uh, higher VOC in order to reduce slightly better, slightly the, the current uh, could be uh, part of the uh, potential uh, application for particular, for particular uh, condition. And uh, so it was pretty interesting as well, the comparison between the flex and the glass. Again, how is the difference every time? So that is correlated again from the transparency uh, between the two substrate. I try to skip uh, this part just to try to go on. That's, uh, you can see there are uh, so several different colors. So if for specific for the OPV, it's possible to design and to define the color in, uh, in this way. Uh, depending on the material, you have a different lifetime, different cost and different uh, performance. But uh, uh, depending uh, of the uh, application, uh, uh, most of the time it could be that there is as well a, a request of the static uh, connected. And so the color is uh, as well another important uh, important part for the commercialization. Uh, I try to skip this part for the PV because I look at that I'm pretty on the time. Uh, uh, just uh, this uh, I think is uh, pretty interesting how you can modify as well the lifetime. These are uh, so the life stability so just to uh, 10 seconds to explain uh, uh, the, the method so you, you leave your uh, the devices uh, under the sun and uh, sorry under the light that re reproduce uh, the, the, the sun uh, spectrum and so in, in, uh, in this case you leave in continue exactly to see how is the behavior in, uh, in this way for uh, uh, the, the direct uh, for the, the, the 1000 watt per square meter and uh, it's clear that the lamp uh, uh, creates as well temperature and so normally you have a 60 degree as well and so you see that uh, for the ET, uh, for the active layer so in this way to without uh, or with the, the additive because you can put as well additives or different other solvent or, or other material that can uh, modify as well the the morphology, the nanomorphology internal of the bulk. And so you see that there is a different behavior in terms of the stability. In the other part as well, it's not only important the active layer, but as well the interlayers or the, the, as I tried to say before, so the ETL, that is the electron transport layer, and the HTL, that is the whole transport layer. And so you can see that just to change in the, in this way with a similar stack so just to change uh, material so how change as well the behavior in terms of the stability and the other part so what is good and what is bad for the uh, for the lifetime here are just to say you know that 
In this case, for example, you have a different system, different formulation, but just to try to explain the concept, uh, it's clear that, for example, you see that this uh, light blue is much more stable than not this uh, yellow, because this yellow so is slightly stable and after to start to drop. Uh, so, what, what is good and what is bad? Uh, just to try to explain in the other graph, the blue side, the blue line, is the, uh, the, uh, the formulation, but the material involved are the same, just changing the solvent in this way. And so, how is changed as well the morphology and the impact of the morphology in the performance and in the stability as well. But just to say that, uh, so in this way, the blue one is a, is a 20% less than not the initial performance of the, of the yellow one. And so for some kind of application, the yellow one, where there is a, a, a less stressing under the light, could be the best. But maybe for a, a, a more generation power for the long term, the blue one could be the best one. So if we see, for example, from a energy, um, energy yield, so in this way, the, the, the normally is, la, is called lifetime energy yield, so the, how a system can produce the energy during the time. And so you see that uh, so more or less there is uh, that the yellow producing much more in the beginning, arriving around uh, 1,400 1, hours, that is arriving to the same performance. And after, so you can calculate more or less that after 2,600 hours uh, in the um, uh, exposure to the light, so you have the same quantity of energy producing by the blue and the yellow uh, formulation. And so in this case, uh, you can decide as well for the kind of application, which kind of formulation will be better for a specific application. So I tried to skip uh, this part for the laser to optimize as well the geometric effect or so the area that uh, you can provide for, uh, for uh, to the absorption. Uh, I try to go on, uh, I think there is no space for the low light, uh, was just to give an overview for uh, as well uh, all the development connected to the low light. And what means the low, the low light is depending not more for the sun, but depending on the light, uh, internal, the artificial light. And so in that way it's necessary to uh, define a slightly better and to change the stack uh, and change in uh, um, in some kind of, as well, maybe some materials, but in uh, just in general way, so in uh, it's not uh, the, the same devices, uh, so it's necessary to change in order to provide the, the really extremely low light uh, uh, that arrive to the plant. Uh, just a, a small example, uh, just to show how growing, uh, and uh, so, sorry, I tried to skip, um, just to show that there is as well all the part of the uh, investigation in order to improve the, the, uh, the quality of the panel in order to have less defect possible. This is a really old panel, I take one really bad, but just to show what you can uh, see in this case uh, uh, for, uh, for different investigation. And here is just to show how the, our panel and so in this way uh, till to this one is from the R&D, this is the, from the production. And uh, another part uh, I think is interesting uh, to see how is the evolution, especially in the performance here are normalized. So in this case is a small uh, mini module, we're speaking about 20 square centimeter. So when you try to grow in, in, uh, in this way, so this is a black line is from the R&D. So you see that the performance start to drop down when you increase is the dimension, this is connected to the defect, the uniformity uh, in this, the pinhole that is created. You try to imagine that I said before uh, that the thickness is around, uh, the thickness of the active laser is around the 300 nanometer. 300 nanometer so is <laughs> is a really, really, really thin. And so you have to maintain this thickness for, a, uh, for a, um, a square meter. And so you can imagine, so the, the, the probability to have the defect uh, in, the, in the film. And so, but uh, you see that, uh, so when start to grow in the dimension, especially for the production, will be much more stabilized uh, around 30% less of the initial value. And so in this way, we already know that more or less uh, for the performance achieved in the R&D mini module, uh, so we can calculate more or less that the final module for the production line is expected like a 30% less. 
just a really quick, I just a small image, some part for the, our spin-off, the installation that already made in the last four years. And uh, so there are uh, different products, sunlight, uh, some, uh, some new glass, uh, and uh, some new facts. Uh, uh, so this is, for example, a building integration in the glass-glass uh, uh, encapsulation, so it's integrated in the building. Uh, in this case, uh, are uh, sticked uh, over. Uh, and so this is a particularly interesting application because uh, uh, you can consider that for this kind of application, uh, you have a, gener a positive generation because it's clear, it's a PV and you translate the light uh, in energy. But uh, what I said uh, normally, what I say normally is uh, that you generate as well negative energy. What I want to say that uh, in this case, you are able to block the, the, the near infrared light and so you increase the thermal comfort and this especially for the brazil that is a tropical and equatorial country you reduce the consuming uh, of the um, uh, air condition so for this i said that is a, a negative uh, energy in this way so to using this application you are able as well to reduce the consuming for uh, some other application like the air condition in order to maintain the temperature in the shopping mall um, here as well, uh, a similar application. Uh, here as well, uh, a similar but just in outdoor. Uh, just to show uh, again a different uh, overview. This is uh, again uh, a shade. This is pretty interesting because it's the last installation. Uh, is uh, again this one is a glass glass. Uh, uh, encapsulation and uh, so you see that uh, all the building, the headquarter of Kaua is a company here in Brazil, so it's completely covered uh, by the OPV in uh, glass glass encapsulation with the OPV. And here is another another uh, application for uh, is a Natura project. Uh, we're speaking about uh, 1,500 or 600 square meter of installation and uh, this is another one. Here you can see in a different ways, not only here, but as well in this part. Here as well the trucks and so the mobility in this way for the bus stop. So to see that you can provide in every shape as well. There is as well another bus stop. Here is as well the urban furniture. For example, this is the OP3, uh, is the product, is able to convert so the light in energy that's uh, so here you are able to uh, connect the mobile or the electronic device and to recharge or otherwise you can use the energy produced for ex for example for a, a router wi-fi and so in that way you can make for example uh, normally you know you know that for the wi-fi you need uh, a, a plate to say that there is the wi-fi so in this way you can uh, make uh, so uh, a, a special um, a special design where the people uh, when see in a place or in a square or in where or in a street uh, already this design uh, you already know that there is the Wi-Fi free for example. Uh, this is the same one in another application. This is another one that is uh, is possible to control it by by. Uh, uh, the mobile, you can control as well the music and the special design like umbrella can maintain the music around of the space. And so in this hotel, you are able to put a different, uh, <coughs> different of this flower. And so everyone can choose their music without to knowing the other one. And so here the team in the R&D. And uh, so in, uh, in this case, uh, so thanks as well for your attention. So, Diego, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I have a few questions of my own. Um, yeah. And I'm also asking the chat if they have any questions. Um, my area of research is far, far away from material. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> so um, I might have some um, pretty uh, beginner's questions. So um, my first question is um, when we talk about um, solar cells, um, of course, light comes in, and a, uh, a, um, a portion of this light will be reflected back. So it makes it, it doesn't transfer to to energy, right? Yeah. 
part of this light will be absorbed. And from the absorbed light, part of it will actually generate energy, right? Yeah. Or current and voltage, right? Um, so my first question is, um, you showed in a previous slide, um, I think it was spin and shielding. A spin, um, shielding, and uh, I think it was shield. Uh, um, no, blade. 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 Oh, yes, blade shielding, right? Uh, blade coating, um, yes, but you can call Blade that. coating, yeah. yes, th thank you. And um, my question is, um, have you considered different structures also for the sh for the for the coating to absorb more light or to uh, um, and somehow reflect light back into the solar cell? Yeah, no, is uh, absolutely for uh, you said that you don't know nothing, but uh, the question <laughs> is absolutely absolutely good. Yeah, it's clear there were no time in uh, really few minutes all the challenge and what we are working on. Uh, but uh, is absolutely so in this way is clear we have as well as uh, some development to uh, make uh, some nanoparticle or some coating uh, over the, the the barrier in order to have a less uh, potential refraction of this light because as you mentioned uh, part of this light uh, is can be reflected not enter inside is not uh, is not converted uh, and the other part is clear when uh, when you have your stack so uh, in this case, there is part of the light, uh, and we have uh, some solution, for example, to put, uh, uh, we call it a back sheet, so uh, something that uh, uh, is possible to reflect part of this light, uh, and mm -hmm. so the way there is the, uh, the, the uh, cross in the light, uh, there is this reflection and uh, you can provide. There is as well uh, one branch, uh, I don't know if it's in the material side, or, but it's, uh, it's called light management, and so in this way, there are some physical effects like uh, the plasmonic effect uh, where it's possible to apply some uh, layer or to create uh, a really uh, modification uh, in the first part uh, where it's possible to manage the light, to spread the light uh, in the way that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my second question is about wavelength. Um, so we, we have um, taking solar light, for example, uh, we have a given wavelength, right? And you have some materials that are better for some wavelength um, and not for other ones. So yeah. my question, it, it can be um, not very smart, my question, but still, um, does it make sense to combine different materials to absorb different wavelengths? Or in your process, can you only use one absorbing wavelength uh, material? No, it's an excellent question. So it's clear that the development uh, going, uh, so there is uh, in the physics, in the chemistry, there is a relationship between uh, the absorption and as well uh, the band gap uh, that is, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can achieve. And tendentially, uh, when you have a lower band gap, uh, uh, so the difference between the HOMO and the LUMO, uh, so the, the HOMO and LUMO are the high occupied molecular orbital and the LUMO is the low unoccupied molecular orbital, so where the uh, hole and the electron are able to, to go in. In other way, maybe, so for the audience, it's easier to, because this is more chemistry uh, definition, but from the physical definition is the valency band and conductive band. Uh, so, uh, in, uh, in this case, it's clear that, uh, so for the organic, uh, you have uh, some material that uh, are able first uh, to catch the light and to translate uh, what technically is called in an exciton, so like a deep hole where there is the hole and the, and the electron. And so, uh, in this case, correct, you can, you're able to absorb just one part. So, for this, the evolution going uh, for the other part, because uh, you have the acceptor that is the second material that now is able to catch this kind of part. I show it in one slide, exactly to try to cover this part. It's also true that more you grow in this part, the more you lost a part of this color and so start to become like a black or brown. One the demonstration is as well uh, for the perovskite that are a low, we can classify like a low band gap, and tendentially the absorption is absolutely strong and uh, is much higher than not uh, the, the, um, the optical densities are really, really high. 
and is like a triangle so that's uh, drop down uh, to the uh, to the near infrared so for this uh, there are especially in europe uh, in particular in uk uh, several uh, one company but in uh, oxford uh, for example is uh, really strong in that way uh, to coupling with the standard silicon and so in this way the silicon uh, coupled with the perovskite in order to provide the part uh, that is left by the silicon and to improve uh, in this tandem uh, the performance and to achieve higher performance. If I remember well, maybe I make a mistake, but uh, is around they arrived at a really big record uh, combining with the silicon arriving to 80, 28, uh, 28 something percent. Which is a big number, right? It's an absolutely big number. Consider that for the silicon, the limitation, the physical limitation are uh, around 30%. Sure. Yeah, that is, that's really huge. Um, yeah. There is another question here from, the, from our audience, from Clovis. Um, let me try to copy it to the, to yeah. the stream, but I will read it to you. Um, can you see it? What is the maximum observed efficiency of the system? And then what percentage of the energy that reaches the plate in form of sunlight is transferred into electrical energy? Yeah, no, uh, I'm not catching the, really the, the, the question in the, the point. I, I think his question is, um, what is the maximum efficiency of a solar cell? Ah, yeah, okay, no, this is easier to say because, uh, so just, uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, the Nobel Prize for this kind of category of material in this way, you know, for, was, uh, one of these was the Alan Eager, was uh, three, uh, three researchers, three, three professors, and they gained in, in 2000, and I think, uh, or 1999, the Nobel Prize. <clears throat> so just to say that is a really recent, and uh, so the small de the, the devices were starting to develop in the middle eight years of the last century, and there was really, really few percentage. Uh, so now, till two, uh, two or three years ago, maybe four, the percentage, so the conversion was around uh, 11, uh, 12 percent with this kind of system of the acceptor with the fuller end. Uh, but now, recently, with the non fuller acceptor, where is combining this small molecule able to catch and go in the, the direction of your question to catch more, more sun and so in that way to convert in a, in a higher performance. Recently, there was appeared in a nature uh, uh, paper a few months ago that uh, go over to 18 percent, one eight percent. So it's really, really huge, especially because in some way broken as well the model for the limitation for the organic uh, uh, photovoltaics and so in this way was a really really big step and opened the way to a really full uh, market the big step will be translate this uh, from the small devices for a big module yes okay and i have one last question also yeah. um, which is about the lifetime of the device um, yeah. what is the problem in the lifetime is it the, the coating or is it the, the cell itself? Yeah, so if you have a um, couple of weeks, uh, I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, that the people uh, has all this time. Or that. So, but just a joke uh, on one side. So, the, 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 as I said before, so uh, in this case uh, is a pretty a paradox, no? Because if from your day by day experience, if you take uh, one pen uh, in a plastic pen, if you live uh, uh, outdoor, especially here in Brazil with this strong uh, sun you know already what's happened after three months uh, or six months. So you take this pen, it's yellow, it's uh, broken, it's easier to broke, uh, lost completely the, the property. I don't want to enter inside for the specific and explain in the chemistry side uh, what's happened. But just to say that from your standard experience, you already know that the plastic uh, is damaged by the ultraviolet uh, and not only by the ultraviolet part. So for the organic, it's the same. And so in this way, you need to protect. And so in that way, you, you put normally the ultraviolet cutoff in order to remove the stronger part of the ultraviolet that can destroy the polymer chain inside or can create issue. But there is as well all the part for the temperature, because if you think in that you have a sandwich, you know, like a, a, a 
like an hamburger, no? So in that way, you have a multi-layer, and every layer we're speaking about that is a 10 nanometer, uh, some layer can be 300 nanometer, some other maybe could be, uh, I don't know, 50 nanometer, and so a really, really thin. You deposit, you have uh, maybe a really small dust uh, or some really small particle, and this creates a pinhole. This pinhole creates uh, a shunt. Uh, technically, it's called it so when uh, there is uh, uh, some uh, two contact really close uh, and so passing uh, the current. And so, in that way, starting to create the issue or to reduce uh, the performance. The other part, uh, there is as well uh, the light because there are some chemical effects uh, between the materials. Technically, so there are uh, dimerization. So, when it's created some uh, bond inside, so. I don't want to, again, I'm starting to speak in for two weeks, <laughs> just, uh, just to say that uh, so there are uh, several issues uh, connected. Everyone is possible to reduce uh, step by step, but in general way, so it's clear that the oxygen, uh, the humidity, but in oxygen in general, can create uh, this, uh, uh, can danificate uh, out, uh, outside of the part of the light. Uh, without to uh, avoid or to, without to forget as well the temperature. And uh, so for the single one, uh, there are some issues. You can imagine when you start to combine in the outdoor application, in this case, uh, you have to uh, a really strong panel in that way uh, to support uh, and to have uh, the, the energy produced that you expected. That is perfect. Okay, I answer in a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 perfect. Um, so uh, let me thank you again, Diego. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, for someone like myself that I'm not really in material science and, and research, it was really interesting, and it makes me really glad to see that um, we are we as Brazil and Latin America and so on, we are doing such nice research in here and creating these products that I can easily see everywhere in the near future here. So yeah. thank you again so much. Many thanks, Jose, for the invitation. It was a pleasure. And again, there is all the part of the forecast that uh, who doesn't know that uh, maybe we can find a, a right collaboration as well. Mm -hmm.